Hello world, Houston here, bringing you another review from Real Talk. Today, Kyle's not with me. I'm the only one that has seen this movie. The movie is called Extremely Loud, Incredibly Close. Now, if you know me at all, any of my friends that are listening, you know this isn't usually the movie that I watch. But, I picked a movie that we could both tolerably watch, I hoped. So, uh, I was actually surprised uh, how great this movie was. Um, it's about the Shell family that's put through a tragic loss when Tom Shell, played by Tom Hanks, is trapped and killed in the Twin Towers in 9-11. His son, Oscar Shell, played by Thomas Horn, struggles with a sudden loss of his dad, which causes constant tension with his mother, played by Sandra Bullock, but finds hope when he discovers a key in his father's possessions and embarks on an adventure to find a matching lock. During this journey, he meets many strangers due to the vague clue left with the key and finds out truly what life is all about. Like I said, if you know me personally, this isn't usually the movie that I would watch. It's a drama, it's very touching, it's very slow. But it's usually one of those movies you would think of me just running into a room with people watching a movie and I sat down and watched half of it. If you know me personally, like I said before, you'll doubtfully pen me watching this movie. It's very slow and spaced out with many shots of populations and dramatic scenes and scenery and but for the most part the content is really emotionally engaging and pulls you in to connect with the story which is another big thing that i liked about it i want to break down the characters really quick because the characters are of course important in a movie but very um, focused on in this movie it's it's the story of not only the son which is more or less the main uh focus but also his family around him, which you kind of find out later in the movie. So, as for characters, I'm a massive Tom Hanks fan, and I have been a fan of practically everything I've seen him in. He doesn't have a massive amount of screen time in this film, but his character as a father really looks natural, and is another example of his talent as an actor. As for Sandra Bullock, I never really thought she was ever going to get that much purpose or screen time through the movie, but she really grabs a little bit of shine or a little bit of polish toward the last half of the flick. She was developed very well, but her development was really from a first time watcher. The Shining Star is easily the breakout actor Thomas Horn. He's acting as a top his acting is top notch for a fifteen year old. And his role as Oscar as a gifted minded boy, aka genius, that loves solving puzzles and going on adventures with complex instructions, or next to no instructions at all, is really riveting and again, like I said with Tom Hanks very natural. It's an easy descriptive word and it's easy to put with all the actors and actresses in this movie. It felt very close to home. The funny thing is, Thomas was actually a contestant on the game show Jeopardy during Kids Week, so he's not really faking his intellect in this role. Huh. Another time to say he was being natural. Every supporting actor and actress were all believable and all natural. Honestly, this is the it, honestly this is to be expected after watching the new Amazing Spider-Man or a couple of recent films I've went and seen. Somehow the summer blockbuster just really drags down, and when you see something like this that catches your eye and may have flew up under the radar um, of a movie watcher like me that, that doesn't focus on this genre that much, it's really a breath of fresh air. Also, know that the film is 130 minutes long, and as I said before, very slow. I promise when you get to the ending, every minute will be worth it, but I suggest not watching it before you go to bed, because the relaxing music and touching Hallmark-like scenes will easily rock you to sleep. As for the title, I'm assuming Extremely Loud would be the 9-11 event, and the Incredibly Close would relate to this event hitting very close to home. But, like I said, I don't really know the meaning, that's just my best guess. I could be overthinking it, I kind of tend to do that. So we've kind of mentioned on episode two that uh, we're going to come up with a new ranking system here on Real Talk, and I've kind of broke down just a one through ten, um, minorly descriptive breakdown, just to give you a decent rating on our mindset about the movie. Like I said, a one through ten scale. Kind of going to break it down on this one, and we'll touch on it a little bit uh, more on episode three. So if we rate it one to two, it's unbearable and unwatchable. <laughs> Three to four, some good ideas or performances, but overall, just not where it needs to be. Five or six, it's more of a matinee. Um, some will love, some will hate. Nothing amazing, but not completely awful. Um, a lot of like fanboy films, uh, 
maybe a mediocre comic book um, or a movie that's made into a book that may relate more to people that have read the book or a fan of the series, but not some casual moviegoer that doesn't have any premise on the story before the end of the theater. Seven to eight is a full price, something you would recommend to a friend or maybe buy on DVD when the price goes down. It's memorable, something you may want to tell people about, one of those movies you may like discussing with your friends and complimenting on it uh, consistently whenever you get a chance, but it's not top notch. Nine to ten is above and beyond. It will be a movie that we will want to see every chance we get. It's a snap buy whenever it comes out, almost whatever the price. 20 bucks and under, of course. Now that I've explained the new rating system, as for Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, I'm going to give it between a 6 and a 7. But I love the characters. I love the acting. I love the story. I do think this may be just one of those movies that is not a genre preference for me. It did get to some points where it's very, very slow. And you kind of have to just bear with it. So I do feel like there's some segments that you know, could be cut out or something that you can just put in special features and say, you know, here's the scene we cut out. It was really good. You know, explain it elaborated on the plot that we had already like dished out, but it didn't really advance um, the story in a, a solid manner. So I do think the movie could be a little bit shorter. Um, something as minusque as that does bring it down a couple of points in my mind because I could have easily fell asleep and I wasn't even tired. But if you put the whole idea together, if you get through the whole movie, it's definitely a great film. Not above and beyond, but a great film. It is memorable. It's something that I would tell people that if they get a chance to watch it, to watch it. Um, and that's why I said around seven. But um, the length and the slowness is what put me at six. So we'll just say 6.5 is my rating. But like I said one more time, it's uh, definitely something you may want to rent now. Uh, if it's really cheap on DVD, it's something you could pick up. But that about wraps it up. So uh, thanks for listening. We'll have more reviews up soon. See you guys.